Hello everybody. Today we will be discussing about what is called as hangman's fracture. The name looks quite uh, different and so let's see what is this hangman's fracture and the treatment of the same. So this is an image from the movie Sixth Sense. I hope most of you would have watched this movie. So this is what was happening a couple of years, a uh, few decades back uh, when they used to hang the culprit. So this is uh, the way they hang and this resulted in a fracture called as hangman's fracture and the death of these individuals were attributed because of these uh, fractures. Before getting into the details of what is hangman fracture, as I already uh, told many times, we have to know about the anatomy of the particular bone before dealing with the pathology of the bone. So we have to know the anatomy of C2 before discussing of hangman's fracture, which is nothing but a C2 fracture. So this is the dense, so this is the C2 body, this is the dense, this is the articular posterior articular facet of the dense, this is the superior articular facet which gets articulated with the atlas, this is the bifid spinous process, this is the lamina and this is the articular process which gets articulated with C3. So this is very very important. So this is a cross sectional view of C2, this is anterior, this is posterior, this is the dense. This is the transverse process which is very rudimentary, this is the pedicle, this is the superior articular process, this is the body and this portion is the lamina and this is the spinous process. C2 again is very important to know, I mean we have to be sure about the applied anatomy of the vertebral artery because whenever we are dealing with C1, C2 fixation techniques or C1, C2 procedures, the vertebral artery is at higher risk of injury. So as you can see the vertebral body comes all the way from the C2, it goes lateral, goes into the transverse foramen of C1 and at C1 it comes medially, then it turns back and goes into the brain. Similarly, if you see in the sagittal view, it goes anterior, then it comes posterior and curves medially. So when you are putting a C1, C2 transarticular screw which uh, goes and fuses the C1, C2 joint, you have to be very careful that you are not hitting the vertebral artery. So the term hangman's fracture was first coined by Schneider in 1965. It is nothing but a bilateral fracture which is traversing the pars interarticularis of C2. This is the pars of C2. So it is a fracture of the pars of C2 with an associated traumatic subluxation of C2 on C3. Basically the C2 gets fractured at the pars and then it gets subluxated over the C3. 